Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news at 10, live on Channel 7. A reminder of our top story. President Buhari calls for unity amongst Nigerians, says true federalism is what the country needs at this point in her history, as he's honored by the Progressive Governors Forum in Abuja. Appeal court strikes out Justice Walter Noggen's appeal against the motion ex parte granted by the Code of Conduct Tribunal, ordering him to step aside as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Inspector General of Police announces arrest of over 150 suspected kidnappers across the country between April and May as he meets with police commissioners and other senior officers in Abuja. And dozens feared dead after migrant boat excised off the coast of Tunisia. ChannelCV.com has more information for you. And go to youtube.com forward slash channels web to view our videos. Watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel CV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. And besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channel CV and Channel 24 app has an eyewitness feature, so you can use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. The failure of the local government administration as the third tier of government has been attributed to the insatiable quest for power by politicians at the expense of real development and service delivery at the grassroots level. This formed part of the submission at the third edition of the Oba Sikiru Adetono lecture held in Ijebode, Ogu State. Speakers at the event say there is a need for constitutional reforms that will strengthen the powers, functions and the autonomy of the local government. The two-in-one event is the professorial chair being promoted by the Awujale of Ijebuland, Obasikiru Adetona, as well as his 85th birthday ceremony, and in attendance is the governor-elect of Ogun State, Dakwa Biodun. Two former governors of the state, the Allah Fionfoyo, other traditional rulers from far and wide, captains of industries, and members of the academia. <laughs> The gathering provides an opportunity for the discussants to examine the issues of good governance and development anchored on the performance of the local government councils in Nigeria. Politicians are just doing for positions. They are not addressing our woes. So you wonder, is this politics for its own sake, just to accumulate power, or is it the people? By extension, local governments are as good as dead. The real issue about the failure of local governments in our country is the question of the long delay but inevitable constitutional restructure of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Obasikiru Adetona, who spoke in the local language, says Nigeria must go back to the era where traditional rulers were part of decision-making process at the local government level. In his goodwill message delivered by his deputy, the governor of Ogun State commends the royal father for his contribution to the socio-economic and political development of Ogun State and Nigeria. Oba Dr. Sikiru Adetono is a man of many parts whose life and legacy will transcend many generations. The event ends with the cutting of the 85th birthday cake as dignitaries join the celebrant to mark the occasion. The Abuja Division of the Court of Appeal has struck out four appeals filed by the former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Nogan, in relation to his trial before the Code of Conduct Tribunal. The three-man bench led by Justice Stephen Ada in the four unanimous judgments 
held that three of the appeals had become an academic exercise since the trial had been concluded by the CCT. Our correspondent Amaka Okapo has this report. As early as 9 a.m., journalists and lawyers had arrived at the appeal court premises for the judgment in the four appeals filed by the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoyen. But they had to wait for another five hours until the court convened at 1 p.m. with an apology from the panel led by Justice Stephen Ada. And without wasting any more time, they went straight to deliver judgment. In the first appeal, we challenged the motion expertise which led to Justice Onoga's suspension. The appeal court held that the Code of Conduct Tribunal breached his rights to fair hearing when it ordered his suspension based on allegations of false asset declaration. The appellate court said that from the records of proceedings of the tribunal, parties had joined issues only for the federal government to go behind to take an order that affected the interest of the appellant. The appeal court, however, did not make any orders. Justice Stephen Ada, who read the late judgment, said, since the expertise order had been spent and cannot serve any useful purpose and judgment in the substantive matter has been delivered, the appeal is hereby struck out. Justice Ada, in another appeal filed by Justice Onogen on the bench warrant issued against him by the Code of Conduct Tribunal, struck out the appeal on the grounds that the records of proceedings transmitted to the court did not show that bench warrant was issued and that there was no supplementary records to establish that warrant for arrest was issued. And there is nothing in the appeal that requires the attention of the court. As such, it was struck out. In the third appeal, we challenged the CCT's decision to hear a motion challenging jurisdiction along with the main trial and deliver judgment same day. Justice Tinoade Akomolafe Wilson, who read the lead judgment, agreed with the tribunal that the new criminal law in Nigeria allows the action of the tribunal. In the fourth appeal by Justice Onogen on the refusal of the CCT to obey the Federal High Court and the Court of the Federal Capital Territory and the National Industrial Court, Justice Peter Ige, who read the lead judgment, held that the tribunal erred in law by disobeying the orders. He said, judgments, rulings, decisions and orders issued by court of law are sacrosanct and must be obeyed until they are set aside. In appeal 114, the 70C, the decision of the Code of Conduct Tribunal granting an ex parte order that led to the suspension of the appellant Honorable Justice Onogen has been held today to be something that was done through the back, that it was illegal. But unfortunately, it has come down too late. It remains to be seen whether Justice Onogen will appeal since he still has a right of appeal to the Supreme Court. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. Let's go over to our Abuja studios where Ibrahim Adra is standing by with more stories. Hello, Ibrahim. Hello, Melinda. Now, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, is asking commissioners of police and other senior officers to strengthen the crime management framework of the force in their various commands. Mr. Adamu says the measure will help to sustain the national crime profile of the country, which has facilitated a significant increase in the arrest of offenders and recoveries of firearms. According to the police boss, the arrest of 157 kidnappers across the country in the month of April alone and the arrest of 13 more in the month of May is an indication that the force is winning the fight against crime and criminality. Ms. Adamu, who was speaking in Abuja at a conference with senior police officers, also announced that Kaduna State recorded the highest number of arrested kidnappers. The essence of this conference, therefore, is to challenge you all as strategic police managers at the field operational level to build on the solid foundation already laid with the launch of Operation Popada and strengthen this crime management framework in your respective commands. In order to complement your efforts, safer highway motorized patrol scheme will be resuscitated. This will involve the acquisition of new fleets of operational vehicles, equipment, and weaponry towards expanding the operational scope of the scheme. Similarly, plans are being perfected to establish a national crime analysis center for the purpose of collation, analysis, and dissemination of criminal intelligence to support police operations across all commands. In order to complement your efforts, 
Safer highway motorized patrol scheme will be resuscitated. This will involve the acquisition of new fleets of operational vehicles, equipment, and weaponry towards expanding the operational scope of the scheme. Similarly, plans are being perfected to establish a national crime analysis center for the purpose of collation, analysis, and dissemination of criminal intelligence to support police operations across all commands. At the end of this conference, it is my expectant, uh, expectation that we will have achieved two cri critical outcomes. Firstly, to resolve to return to our respective commands with a renewed vigor to redouble our efforts towards taking the war against kidnappers, arm robbers, and bandits to their doorsteps. Secondly, to draw on our rich professional experiences in evolving more <coughs> potent strateg uh, strategies directed at attending our mandate of maintaining internal security and reversing the current trend of crime across the country. Inspector General of Police Mohammed Ademo. Now to Plateau State, where the specialist hospital there is a beneficiary of a philanthropic gesture from his Love Foundation following the donation of an intensive care unit center equipped with state-of-the-art medical facilities for the benefit of patients in Plateau and the north central region of Nigeria. The General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboe, performed the official donation and commissioning of the center which also has a generating set and solar-powered energy facility. An intensive care unit center with modern medical facility is donated to the Plateau State Specialist Hospital for patients who require special care. It is a social responsibility initiative of his love foundation of the redeemed Christian Church of God. The general overseer of the church, Pastor Enoch Adeboe, inaugurates the intensive care unit named after him and his wife, Pastor Folu Adeboe, as he renders special prayers for patients and others present. In the mighty name of Jesus, no more sickness. If you decide to give your life to him today, I decree in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every sickness, every disease, everything that is out of God in your system shall be uprooted today. And so it's with great joy of the Lord that I want to declare open this intensive care unit of the uh, Plato Specialist Hospital in the name of the Father and of the Son. The, the Plateau State Deputy Governor says the gesture is the first of its kind by a faith-based organization and he wants such to be emulated by others in the service of humanity. This hospital is now better equipped to respond to emergencies and save families from the agony of deaths caused by inefficient medical attention. Permit me to say that I equally appreciate all members of the church who have supported our father in the Lord to accomplish this task. And ever since the foundation was set off, we have been able to establish in one year 58,000 projects all over Nigeria. And we have read from about 43 thousand centers all over Nigeria where we have footprints of the redeemed presentation of God. The guests are thereafter taken on a walk to inspect the facility. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Members of his law foundation believe the intensive care unit will serve people from neighboring states of Bauchi, Taraba, Gombe, Benue, Kaduna, and Nasarawa state, who require urgent and special medical care service. And when the news at 10 returns, economic and market analyst commends President Muhammad Buhari's reappointment of Godwin Emefile as central bank governor. Sees continuation of growth policies. That's in our business news. Do stay with Channels Television.